it's going to be a challenge for us all. Um, and then how do we keep up kind of our obligation in the collegiate level to teach voice majors and prepare them for careers? I, I mean, this kind of old responsibility that we're used to, this is still present. Um, Elise, what are you going to do um, to keep these skills uh, coming to the students that need them? Well, I think first it's really important for us to realize that that change is difficult and often we look for answers um, that soliciting what the theme has really been, soliciting, not, not feeling pressure to provide the answer necessarily because um, with change brings discomfort and it, it requires disruption, but it's important to do it at the pace of the student, right? So some of that has to do with enabling students to do their own work. I'm a person that is an intrusive advisor. I have a lot of students that are at risk, that are academically at risk, that come from low socioeconomic areas. And I, because they are missing that kind of le that guidance gap, I do a lot of that filling in the gap. But I think it's important to remember that we can enable our students to uh, to learn their repertoire in a more independent and autonomous way. But it's not a it's not a one off. We have to set up processes that often take a, a extreme amount of time. I mean, that's that's really and what we're not afforded, right? So we're not afforded all of this uh, incredible amounts of time to set up these processes, but engaging the student, uh, having them develop the processes for which they are going to be completing their repertoire and their work and their skills, um, that, that has a lot to do with buy-in. They're more likely to adhere to that buy-in and to follow through if they are a part of that process. Um, and and hot, really holding them, not, I don't want to say accountable in a negative way, but holding them uh, accountable in a very positive way that, that they are then able to achieve. Um, I do a lot of instruction where I'm, I will uh, show and demonstrate and then I'll explain what I'm doing throughout the process so then they can replicate that later on. I do a lot of uh, leadership practice, leadership techniques, giving them step-by-step -step instructions for some of those more difficult concepts. And uh, it's taken, it, you know, it didn't take a semester, it took years to accomplish, but I feel that my students are much better off. Now, it, and that's, I know that's not the answer that, you know, we wanna hear, we wanna have an answer, but, um, and, and again, a rising tide lifts all ships. So I'm available, I know the panelists have expressed their interest to continue to, to contribute, um, that we're here for you. I'm here for you personally. If you want to troubleshoot some of these ideas and come up with a solution that best fits, fits the need of your students and where they are in their journey, I'm very happy to, um, to do that. So it, Cheryl Hill had asked that question and Cheryl, I'll send you my email address if or my email address is available if you wanna reach out and we can, I'd be very happy to troubleshoot with you. These people have just been pushed through an incredibly um, high, um, high tension kind of period and have learned a lot really fast. So um, you're seeing uh, five of them here. I would encourage you to look on the, in the front matter of the report and see the entire committee. Um, there are some um, really fantastic um, people working on this committee. We're, we're so lucky. Um, Corrine, were, were you going to add one more thing about this, uh, the student experience and how we prepare them? I actually wanted to jump back in um, and respond about the um, roster of expanding um, our contacts um, in this time beyond the Eurocentric Western male dominated canon. Um, I wanted to say that in our outreach to the folks who are already listed um, in the roster, which is in one of the appendices, um, in each one I had a dialogue with to discuss what this would entail. And um, really the only thing that they've for sure signed on to is that they will make themselves available at least to respond to an email outreach um, to discuss what you might want them to do with your choir. Um, they might not be available, but they've agreed at least to respond and say, well, I have a colleague that might be perfect or um, to come in and do a Q&A. As some of them are academics and may want to do more, um, they might say, this is great for my dossier and I would like to prepare something for your class. I know for me last semester, I, I tried to say yes as much as possible if somebody wanted me to talk about my area's Jewish music and composition. 
a couple of times I said though, I, I don't have time to make a PowerPoint and a handout for you. And they said, just show up, you know what? And just talk about your experiences and we're all experts in our own experiences, right? So that's fine, that's easy. And maybe that's all we need from some of these folks so that we don't need to put extra pressure on them to do extra prep work for us. Um, so I would just wanted to, to say the way to use the roster is perhaps just to open up a dialogue with such a person. If there's someone in an area that interests you or you think would interest your students, um, maybe just ask them what they think they could contribute. Maybe a Q&A is the best format or maybe something else. Um, maybe if, if there are problems ac with um, uniform access to, uh, to internet connection, Wi-Fi connection, it could be done on paper, maybe there could be an email conversation. It doesn't have to be on Zoom. Um, there are all sorts of possibilities once you work with an actual human being here. Thank you so much. Well, you know, we didn't get all the appendices out and, and you're talking about the first appendix. It's, this is a, a weird document. It's, it's never gonna probably be printed. And so it's just a single page with a link and the link um, bounces you over to NCCO's website where you're asked to just give us your name and email and you know, kind of where you are. And, what are areas that, that you um, can, can help? And then we'll offer that up to your colleagues so that maybe you've never crossed paths, but you have exactly the skills um, that are, are needed um, by a colleague and, and with Zoom, there you go. I, I just wanna let everyone know what the appendices are going to be. And this is again where the, so much of the work is. So appendix one is this um, professional contacts database where you'll be able to reference it, but please add your name to it. Appendix two A is the faculty survey results. And then 2B is the student survey results. This is not a three minute survey. This is a major survey, a lot of qualitative data. And so many of the written comments are included. Um, ones that are unique and, and are highlighted um, have been pulled out for you. Um, and then as many of you remember, probably part of the survey was uh, the offering of um, resources to colleagues. And so those are all compiled and organized at the end of these appendices. So those are very rich, the committee is fairly hands off in their analysis, hoping that the data uh, could maybe go out in the field and folks might um, wanna analyze it themselves and offer thought. So that's a 2A and 2B, this uh, survey results. Then uh, appendix three is just, it's epic. It is um, kind of all these sample documents. There's a proposal for face-to-face -face instruction that you might use just even to see what the category headers are. How, how is somebody accomplishing this? Um, cut and paste, I'm gonna use some of that. Um, how about a proposal for hybrid that's face-to-face -face and online instruction? What are the considerations? What are you, um, what are you doing to even prepare yourself for that? What's the technology? We go through it all. Um, there's a sample proposal. Um, this is the third appendix three, uh, letter C. Sample proposal for virtual instruction, purely virtual modality. Um, it goes on and we have uh, a lot of information about virtual choirs. Um, almost instruction manual, uh, handouts for your students so you can give them instructions on how to prepare themselves to record and, and, and learn. All of that is kind of offered as just sample documents. And then um, the fourth section is just kind of a supplemental resources. And it's no longer a list of books and journals. It's uh, apps, websites, YouTube videos. Um, and because this document is coming to you electronically and it's probably gonna always exist electronically, uh, the document itself is just loaded up with um, links. Um, all over the document are links that you can just bounce over to uh, your web browser and watch that video. So it's um, really a, a spectacular um, uh, resource that they've created. And I have to say, um, I think it, we're gonna revisit it at the end of the fall. I just, I just feel like there's gonna be more, either revision to these appendices or a follow-up survey or something. It's just, it's too fascinating to, to stop here. Well, we're coming up at the end of the hour. I, I just wanna give each of you uh, 13 seconds amongst you all, you have to share that, to give us any final thoughts. And I'm gonna start with you, Rallo. Um, final thoughts as, as we uh, dig into this survey and dig into this report. Thank you, Miguel. I know I only have about 10 seconds now, but I think that as we move forward uh, and think very critically about our pedagogy, we've got to remember that the student has to be in the center of that. And I think so often we can lose sight of that and we make our repertoire and pedagogical decisions based on what makes us feel good and what puts a notch on our belt and what adds to our uh, resume. But we've got to remember to put the students and their experiences first. Uh, not only their personal health uh, as we go through COVID, but their emotional health as we uh, 
struggle with uh, social justice issues. Thank you, that's a fantastic point. Uh, Patrick. I would uh, recall the community around you of people who do things like us, like the school teachers who teach music and choir, the private voice teachers, the community choir directors. And I would purposefully try to expand our community outward to involve those people more because A, they may have uh, some solutions and ideas that we can use B, uh, we may have ideas and solutions that they can use. And it also, we now have a need for a network of people in our community to support each other, not only musically, but also emotionally and experientially. And so this is, a, I think, an opportunity to reach out and expand beyond our classrooms and rehearsal halls. That's very inspiring. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Andy. Yeah, I just want to say these NCCO seminars going back to the spring have been as therapeutic as they are informative, you know, just really feeling uplifted by being a part of this incredible field with amazing colleagues, um, not only just to bear witness and learn from their ingenuity and resilience, but just to be reminded that the work we do day in and day out is an, you know, it's an act of love, right? And um, a time where we need to really be there more than ever, not only for our students, but for each other. So I want to thank all of my colleagues here and especially NCCO for providing this space and platform of solidarity um, and, uh, and learning together. Uh, thank you, Andy. Uh, Corrine. I guess I just wanna say that um, Elise mentioned earlier about um, our own fear as, um, as choral conductors, as, as higher ed uh, faculty members in, in exposing maybe our own insecurities in all of this. And um, I think that college is really the place where we should be taking on the tough issues head on. And, um, and it's all the more reason why we can invite others in to help us lead those really difficult conversations. And I keep mentioning obviously this roster, but one person on the roster happens to be my cousin, but she also carried the Torah in the Jewish Women of Color March. Um, recently and I asked her to be on the roster. She's not a choral musician and she said, oh my gosh, no, I don't know anything about choral music. And I said, that doesn't matter. I think you should be on this roster because you can help us have these hard conversations. You are at the intersection of so many areas of oppression and tension in our country and in our world. And why not, why not start these tough conversations? Where else should they be happening than at the collegiate level? And thank you all. It's been a joy to be on the panel with you and to be on this webinar. Thank you very much, Corrine. Um, can I just say the names of the people who aren't here? Um, this, this, you're seeing five spectacular humans of 12 spectacular humans. You aren't seeing um, Dr. Deanna Joseph at Georgia State, Dr. Nancy Klein at Old Dominion. You're not seeing Dr. Michael McGahee at McAllister College, Dr. John Perkins at Butler University, Mr. Aaron Rice, a graduate student uh, representative uh, here at the University of Arizona, Dr. Bonnie Sneed at McLennan Community College, and Dr. Betsy Cook Weber, uh, University of Houston. On behalf of the, of the executive board, thank you so much. And um, the final words for the day, please, to the task force chair, um, Elise Hepworth. Thank you. Um, I just want to remind us all that we are in it together. And I know that seems like a phrase that has been passed around quite a bit over the past few months, but unless we engage with each other, that's how we can be together. And it's important for us to stay in contact. Uh, this, the, the work of this task force is ongoing. We'll be revisiting student surveys, uh, reaching out to you again for to solicit your uh, knowledge and expertise your students' perceptions. I think it's gonna be really important for you to take note of that all through the, the upcoming semester, but we're in the, this is a sense of, this is a source of sol uh, solidarity and I, I am really grateful to be a part of NCCO and, and thank you all so much. Thank you everyone and thank you Miguel for moderating today. As president of NCCO, I wanna make sure you know what's happening next week. We are going to be engaging in a summit on anti-racism and becoming a more racially inclusive organization with uh, Washington Consulting Group and Dr. Jamie Washington. So everyone, thank you again for joining us today. Miguel, thank you for moderating and we hope to see you soon next week too. This brings us to the end of today's webinar. I'd like to thank the executive board of NCCO for uh, setting this all in motion. To each of our panelists for your sincere efforts 
um, all summer uh, and today to advance our profession and to the attendees out there uh, for whom uh, this event is created. Please stay tuned to ncco-usa.org slash webinar. For our next webinar, you've heard from Dominic and then there are three more in September. You can always visit that spot for our evolving webinar archives where today's webinar will appear shortly. And with that, we're finished. Thank you and goodbye.